Well, the scriptures are so, so pertinent and so relevant to our lives. They just are. You know, it has been that, that way throughout all history. It's because they were inspired by the Holy Spirit of God who knows exactly uh, the things to say. And so everything that we read there is, is so pertinent and so relevant. And I just encourage you to pick it up today. Don't let this, if you're listening to this, don't let this be the only time where you pick up the, the scripture today. But, but pick it up, read it for yourself, look for the Lord Jesus Christ and what he is about in, in whatever you read. The, script, the whole scripture speaks of him. But I've just been thinking about, uh, about our world and about um, what's going on in our world. And I just want to bring some verses that I think are very interesting and pertinent and relevant uh, to, to mine. Because there's things that are being believed in our world today that are just, they are they are not in accordance with what the scripture says. And so, one of the things I talked about in the last video was this idea that sin isn't primarily about eating the fruit. It was about breaking God's commandment. And it, it didn't primarily, I mean, it does cause physical death, but it does that because it, it breaks the fellowship that the man has with his source of life, his, his creator, God. And then in Genesis chapter 3, the, the man and the woman, they eat from the tree. And then in verse 16 and following, it says to the woman, you know, he's, he's already cursed the serpent because of the sin, uh, because of his tempting them. And then he says to the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, or shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And there is, there's a ton there that we could get into, things that we could unpack, like the particulars of these curses. But here, here's the deal. There's a lot of people asking the question in our world today, why is the world like this? And what can we do to change it? And this is not to say that we ought not be, be people who are working to make things better. We, we should be as, as followers of Jesus. But what I'm, I want to talk to is the idea and the notion that we can, of our own accord, fix the primary thing that ails us. We can probably make incremental, small changes. But what we see in Genesis 3 is this fundamental catastrophe in, in humanity that set off a domino effect of, of horrible things, pain in childbirth, toil in labor, like ultimate death. I, we're gonna we're gonna look at more instances, but but there was there's just trouble in relationships. And to think that we can do anything that will ultimately solve this problem is wrong-headed and naive. That's why Jesus had to come. Because this problem goes so deep into our hearts that only the Son of God offering himself on the cross for me can change my heart. Laws don't change my heart. Education doesn't change my heart. Only him and what he's done can change the human heart. And that's what we're all really kind of longing for, right? Is how do we change the hearts of people? Well, friend, it's not in a law or even better education. Though those things are not bad. But it has to come at a deeper level.